And the way competency-based learning is happening now, not very much. And that's probably my biggest uh, concern with it. I, I, I love the flexibility. Um, I, I can see why that's so important in my own. I've been teaching open courses these days, and I lose a lot of students because they just get behind. I w work very closely with an online high school that my university runs. Same problem. They're not really competency-based courses. They're very traditional distance ed courses. Um, and a lot of it, there really isn't any social engagement at all. A lot of it is because it is so on their own time and because the, when you break knowledge down into specific competencies like that, well, there isn't really that often for many people, for many of the competencies as the way many people define them, there just isn't that much reason for, for going to a social network, to a discussion forum, for a, a group chat. And so what you see in a lot of CBE settings is initially people start to use it and then they realize this isn't really helping me any. We see this in the MOOCs, for example. Explosion of interest in the discussion forums, very quickly trickling off to little pockets of interaction. So typically not very much at all, really. The learners are the ones that have to bring the meaningful contexts to the learning setting. That's probably the, the first most important principle is you have to find what it is in the case of my own, for instance, my assessment course. Well, every, everybody has to define a curricular aim that they can then practice using the tools, the conceptual tools of the discipline of assessment, uh, practicing to use them in that context. And so uh, by defining competencies a little bit differently, by saying that the really important thing is that they use the sort of the easily assessed stuff. And so the big issue with CBE is assessment. And many people say CBE, DA, direct assessment. And that's the big challenge because many of the things we care about most can't be directly assessed. They're simply not, if you reduce them to something that can be directly assessed, like a musical performance, a lot of stuff we care about just isn't meaningful once you've done that. So it's really about uh, finding ways to get people to practice using abstract conceptual knowledge, the kind of stuff that's in textbooks, the declarative knowledge that can be easily assessed, the more specific skills, but they really have to practice using them when they're trying to walk the walk and talk the talk of the expert, what we would call a, the practices. They're very contextual, they're very um, idiosyncratic for individuals. So the social engagement you asked about previously, that's the key, is getting people to talk about, uh, really quite specifically, uh, one really simple thing I do is getting people to judge the relevance of different either education, knowledge resources, or actually knowledge elements. If you take a more complex uh, topic, like for instance, uh, in my course I'm teaching right now in learning and cognition, we're learning about this week, the topic is uh, uh, encoding in memory, right? So the textbook lists uh, seven implications about encoding uh, for education. Well, it's a really good way to get students engaging in the discussion of which of those is literally most relevant for them because they can't really do it without engaging in that implication and their own role and their own instructional goal. So that's a big part of my work is trying to make that happen and get that kind of social conversation happening.